Welcome to this week's piece. So as you can see, this is a very damaged old dresser. But I love these style, the kind of, they're not too low, they're not too high, and they're just a little extra wide. So I feel like they hold a lot of things, but aren't too big. They aren't the really, really long dressers. They're that really good in-between size. And they're some of my most favorites to redo because I feel like they are perfect to kind of put design ideas on them. And this one had really fun swoopy top drawers. I was hoping to be able to save a lot of this, but it was just so damaged that the top had to come off. There were too many splits and actual missing pieces. So it's like, you know what, let's just see what's going on under here. And that's the route I took. Um, there's a billion different ways to take veneer off. You can do like the damp towel and do it that way. You can do a heat gun. Um, this was all so very loose that it was incredibly easy for me to just kind of... I didn't use a chisel because I didn't want to end up going in. I got it out just in case I needed it, but um, you risk more damage if you use a chisel like that. So this little flat little putty knife worked out really, really well, and it was the tool that I used the entire time, and it went really well. And then, of course, there was still damage on the top because there was like a burn mark that had gone all the way through. So, and then of course water damage. So I'm just filling in that, getting that pushed down. Um, I use my glue syringe and this is actually one of my paint knives and it's so, so thin that it works beautifully for getting glue up underneath and spreading it around underneath the extra layer of wood there. And then I can get that clamped down. When I do clamps like this, that's wax paper. It just prevents anything from sticking. So I'm going to get that clamped down. It will be clamped overnight and then I will fill the rest of the top of this just because there's always some kind of um, damage that happens when you remove the top like that. So it probably would have been better to just do a skim coat, but I was like, no, there's not that much. And I went through and I was just like, there's that much. I should have just done a skim coat, but it's fine. I just went through with my wood filler and filled all the little nooks and crannies that were down in there that little like grain pieces popped up and things like that so now we can get to sanding and this piece required a lot of sanding obviously um, there was just so much I really wanted to my original intention was to see what I could do with these drawers because I thought they were beautiful it wasn't like the best book match I'd ever seen um, and the splodging was just a little bit I don't know it's not the prettiest that I've ever seen but I still thought it was pretty cool looking so I was like well maybe we can we can see what we have to work with and then upon sanding it and getting it back there was just so much missing veneer and it's the really, really thick veneer. The whole thing needed to be redone, like everything. I'm like, well, that's not really gonna work out. So we're gonna go a different route here. Here you just see me repairing a lock. Um, this lock was, I don't know if the locks were original to the piece or if they weren't. There's kind of weird dugouts for them. Anyways, this one wasn't sitting quite right in there, so I just took it out so that I could get it put in the correct position and then get it put back in. It was just slightly off and it was hitting the top drawer above it. So I wanted to make sure that that was sitting flush so that I wouldn't have any trouble with the drawers going in. These top drawers got hand sanded for obvious reasons. Um, and also they had quite a bit of veneer missing. So this piece had been refinished probably numerous times if I had to guess. But you can see quite a bit of patchwork going on. Like there's a little patch around the keyhole there. And there was just kind of missing veneer that had been filled and just all kinds of stuff. So. I wanted to keep these top drawers wood at the very least, so I'm using some stain 
to kind of deepen up the lighter portions of the wood and any of the damage that's there and then this wood has got to go dark obviously the top needs to go dark because it is a lighter wood than the rest of the wood on the piece it was just a little frankenstein-y at you know <laughs> the beginning of this i was like wow this is gonna be fun so to start with i just did a base of dark walnut now this was a water-based stain I prefer water-based stains because of the smell and all that kind of thing. I think they go on quicker, easier cleanup, all that stuff. But I do keep my oil-based stains on hand because sometimes there's just a need for them. And I ended up needing them. So uh, we went this route. Everything's getting the stain. I'm painting in all the lighter areas with a small detail brush and I'm doing multiple coats and I'm realizing that the water-based stain just isn't cutting it here, so we'll carry on later. And now for the top, this is the easiest sand job you can do because that stuff comes off so, so fast. It's great. Um, the edges obviously needed hand sanding. And I just use a little brush to kind of dust off anything that the vacuum can't pick up. Sometimes things will get caught down in there because it creates such a fine, fine dust. And then that wood did not take the stain well. Again, it was old. It was, you know, not the best. And I'm using that water-based stain, so... We, we will change. Um, you can see quite a bit of repair work that has been done on this. Here I'm just adding in that little piece that fell off. Thankfully the owner had kept it in one of the drawers so that was really nice. But you can see all kinds of old wood fill and then obviously new wood fill that I had to do and this is that really really thick thick veneer that they had used. But I did decide to take shellac after everything was all filled, sanded, everything, and I'm going to just kind of protect this, add an extra layer of protection, just in case if at some point in the future somebody wants to maybe do some detail work with um, some stains or paints to bring the grain back and all those, there's just too much damage for me to do that myself. I would have just re-veneered this whole thing. But if somebody wanted to take the time and do all that, I wanted to make sure that they could. So it's been shellacked. It's protected from the paint that I'm going to put on it. Not that it needs protection, but sometimes it will seep into the grain and this will prevent that from happening. Um, I did cover all the escutcheons with some masking tape and then I just cut them out so that I can make sure I get a perfect paint job around them. Now for the fun part, um, so I'm just taking a gray and kind of like, a, it's like a light khaki creamy color and I'm just kind of creating a light blend. I want the center to be the brightest part and I'm going to deepen the outside with the gray. I don't want it to be too stark, that's why we went with gray, but just kind of give some, you know, like that tunnel effect. That's what we want here. So. I let that sit overnight, that first layer, and then I went back in and did it the next day to start the painting on. So I always like to lay my first blank coat of paint down the day before. That way none of it's reactivating when I'm going in and adding so much more paint the next day. I just don't want that to ever mess up my painting because that would be just a world of hurt for me. I knew I wanted this overall dresser to be that really dark navy. So I'm trying to get this on and kind of get it blend, 
blend it in over the sides before I start the full on painting because this will help me blend the painting into that blue because it'll be really hard to blend that blue into the painting later on. So if I can kind of get some kind of blend around the edges going because this is a wrapped dresser, it'll just make my life easier later. And I'm not doing super smooth brush strokes. I'm kind of doing the like X cross hatch pattern with the brush. It's a, this is an animal hair bristle brush. So it's a little bit, it's not too stiff. It's actually pretty soft, but it's not as soft as synthetic and it's kind of fluffy. So it kind of fluffs out the paint and it's really nice. So here I'm just making sure that I am keeping the center fairly light and I'm adding in some extra colors because skies have depth. This is obviously going to be a sky in the center here. And then I smooth it out with the brushes I'm working. I do keep a clean rag in my lap and a bit of water down there. So if I ever need to kind of clean off the brush and go back, I can. And then that was where I decided that I wasn't a huge fan of where it was going. So I kind of went back to blank so that I could start over on the sky again. And I think that's one of my favorite parts about doing this a few times now is that I can, I have faith. I'm like, oh, it's fine. I didn't love that, but it's just paint. And now I can change it to something that I do like. Whereas before I would have panicked, I think, and... I'm like, ah, it's ruined. Can't, can't do this anymore. But now I'm like, ah, oh, it's fine. I'm not loving where this is going. Let's, let's change it. And I do. I just, you just change it. It's as fast as that. I think this is one of the funnest things that I've learned since starting this style of painting is like what you can make with a brush. I'm not doing trees or mountains or anything specific. You're not drawing them in like on a piece of paper. I find that so hard. But when you paint, you like use the shape of the brush to create these shapes that look like parts of nature and I think that's incredible like it's just I think I say this all the time but it's just blobs I'm just making blobs of paint and then eventually the blobs turn into things and I think that's just magical it's really fun watching it come together and that's kind of the bonus of these time lapses is that you're gonna see it very quickly come together where when you're doing it you might feel a little discouraged at first because it takes a bit of time for it to come together but when you get to watch it sped up it's like oh I mean that's really not bad the paintings that I do typically take about two hours give or take some can take longer some can take less this one took longer because I was kind of experimenting with um adding extra layers and I thought that was really fun but it could have been done sooner but I feel like I'm gaining courage and kind of adding things and figuring things out as I go. As you know, this paint dries super fast. This is just the Chalk Mountain Furniture paint that I use. 
And so on warm days, like all of these days have been, um, the paint dries quick. So the parts that you need blended, you have to do those first and fast. And then the other parts that can just go on and they don't necessarily have to be blended. Those are the ones that you can play with and kind of move around with. And then of course you can integrate water and do all that kind of stuff. There's lots of workarounds, but it's just interesting the things that you learn along the way to where you know like okay I can mess around with this and do this differently and do this and other things are kind of like oh I know that I can't mess around with that because it will destroy the entire thing and I'll have to start over and be very upset anyways I just think if you work with the same thing kind of over and over you'll get to know it really well and be able to let it work for you Anyway, I had something fun planned for this dresser. Obviously, I loved it so much, but I wanted it to be like dark and moody, but not not like grumpy moody. You know, I wanted it to be like a cheerful moody. <laughs> and I that's a conundrum. I get it. But I feel like it kind of accomplished that. So you can see I just showed you a lid with multiple colors on it. I use like little lids and things for my palettes and I'll just mix up different colors and when I I won't like fully mix them they'll be a little bit swirled and I like that swirling pattern on the brush and on the palette knives because it leaves those colors on there and they're varying states and it just adds a little something extra And since this is so dark, you'll notice that even the backgrounds of my trees are very, very dark, but we'll brighten them up later. And when you do really, really dark as a base, it's kind of fun because when you put the bright colors on there, they like super pop. So you guys know I take a lot of drives, mostly because I'm traveling between two different states quite frequently. And so when I'm doing that, it's a beautiful drive, actually. Um, I'm trying to pay attention to the trees and everything around me and like the colors and how they grow and things. And I think that's fun, too, because it's something that I'm trying to think about when I'm painting now. And there's so many different colors and shades and layers to things. And so this time I wanted to try that with like the trees and just not have the basic, like I lay down my dark and then I'll highlight with the light. And maybe sometimes there's a third, like this time I was like, no, there's way more than that. So that's kind of what I did. I laid down the base layer and then I did some lighter and then lighter and then lighter and it was just super fun watching them kind of brighten up and come to life and I'd not done that before so I think that's something that I'll continue to do is just keep adding these layers to it and I'm sure at some point you could go too far and have it be too much but I thought it worked out really well in this one and I was super pleased with it so adding like those extra highlights that aren't necessarily a tree color or something that you would typically see in it but I don't know it was just it was very fun to play around with this and I liked where it went and you'll see like I actually mess up later on a front piece of land that I just am like ah that's destroyed so I did a blob let it dry and then fix that too because it just I just didn't like it but again, that's the fun of it. It's just like, oh, well. And this time I was a little nervous because I was like, I'm really far in this painting. If it's ruined now, I'm going to be a little upset. But it wasn't. It was all fine. Everything worked out. The water, I redid the water line here because I didn't like it as dark as it was. And because all the paint's dry, I have to keep it really, really wet here. And I'm adding movement to the water here where you just, I'm scrubbing kind of back and forth. And I really liked how that turned out. I haven't really done this on, usually my lakes and things are fairly smooth. And the oceans get the movements when I do those. But this was really cool to do this here because I felt like it was soft enough that it could have been a lake with like a breeze. 
And again, it was just playing around, seeing what would happen. I'm going to speed up through a bit of this because, I mean, I've been sped up, but you know what I mean. A little extra fast because it's just adding all those layers to make things look more, I'm going to say realistic. It doesn't look realistic, but you know what I mean. Well, these kinds of trees are some of my favorites to paint. 
like these and birch trees and anything where they have like the close-up trunks that I can add the bark to them with the palette knife. I think that is so fun and kind of deciding where the limbs need to come out and how many there should be. I feel like it's a little bit stressful at the same time trying to figure out where they should be but also I just I don't know I really like it. I love how when you do them it just pushes everything back because they're in the foreground so everything else now looks on a different plane and I think that's fascinating.
So this is that front section of ground that I told you earlier that I just, I messed up. I didn't like it. Everything that I did, it just wasn't quite right. And then I had too much paint and it was all blending together and I couldn't get the definition that I wanted. So you'll see me do a few layers and I'm just like, nah, just, it's gone. It's done. Can't, can't do this. And so it's just blob, let it dry, and then I can start over. And this is just back to adding those extra layers of like highlights and getting them in there. And it, man, it just, it's magical. Every time you do it, it's like, oh, it just looks a little bit better. And I think that is so cool. Just these tiny little lighter colors, barely touching, but they add something so special. And this last little bit here, I just wanted to bring some of the yellow from the sky down onto the water. And I wanted it to still look yellow, so I waited till the water was dry before adding it so it didn't mix and turn green. Um, but I needed it to look blended, so I was just using, it was a damp rag and kind of was moving it around and using my fingers as well. And then of course I have to paint the inside lip of the drawer so that they don't look stark when you open them. I'm sealing with my top coat. This is, I'd say like a semi-gloss. And everything gets multiple coats. Now I'm going back to the top here. Again, I needed it to be better. So this is the other stain that I ended up using, it is black. It doesn't come out black. It still looks brown when you're finished. It's just a really, really, really rich brown. It's the oil stain. You can see it automatically works way better. So I just needed to do that. And then I decided this little front section that I told you didn't pan out. I went through and made it kind of like a little field of flowers, so that's what that section is now. This piece, like I said, has been sealed. I didn't know where I was going to go with it, and so that's why I like to seal it first sometimes. You put that down, and then if you mess up, you can literally just wipe it off, and because it's sealed with your top coat, you have the ability to do that. 
it's on there, it's done. If I don't like it, it can be completely wiped back. I don't have to turn it to blobs and start over. I can just take off that part and figure out what I want to do instead. But I liked this, thankfully, and didn't have to do that. I don't know why this was so satisfying, but taking the tape off all the escutcheons was just marvelous. I did have to go through with a little blade and kind of clean up little tiny areas, but it would have been way better than going through and scraping everything off or pulling them out. So I was really pleased with taking those off. Now we can seal again. This will be the second coat on here and obviously first coat on the bottom areas that I painted over the top of. So this thing will be real durable. Now I ended up going in with this poly stain. This one is in Jacobian because it already had the stains down. This is a satin finish. It's just going to add a little bit of darkness to match the top of the piece because obviously that is all kinds of crazy with all the different wood, wood tones. So I'm just matching here and that's why I'm doing this. And instead of the round wood pulls, I changed out the hardware to these. I think they're just a little extra fancy without being too much. So I have to drill new holes for them. What I do is figure out the placement for them. I put the original, I use the original hole so I'm not making too many. And then I will put the handle on, make a mark, go through for the size of the screw that these came with. But then on the back side, I'm using a countersink. So I'm measuring it out with the little collar that it comes with and I can then do all the holes with that on the back side and let it sit in. The original holes were also countersunk so it made them match a little better as well. Oh hi, Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece! I love it. I think it's so pretty and just kind of soft but still has, you know, something. So I think it'd make a great statement piece. I don't, man, I, 
it's just so, it's like dark and moody, but still happy. I, I don't know what it is about doing the paintings that just, they just make my heart happy, you know? They're just lovely little things. And I think they're so much fun. And I'm always so incredibly surprised that they turn into something, because you just never know. You know, when you first start, it just, it always looks like nonsense. And then after, you know, like the third layer, it starts finally coming together and you're like, oh, it's something. That's so cool. I just think it's so fun. But anyways, this was just a really cool old, old dresser. I think it is wonderful. It did require a lot of repairs. If it was going to be fully refinished back to its original state, it would have to be completely um, re-veneered. It has like the really old, thick, thick veneer. And the veneer that I have in my shop is the really thin. I'd have to double up on it and it would just be too much for what, I mean, I got this for less than nothing. So um, I just wouldn't be able to sell it for what it is. So this I think is a great way to kind of keep it in the now and have it be something that somebody will treasure, but also um, something that's, you know, that I can work with in my business to be able to keep things moving and things like that. Mind you, the painted pieces always take um, a little bit longer to sell, which I'm fine with. Actually, most things right now are taking a little longer to sell. It's just, it's a very slow season for, for my business, so. But it's just fun to still be able to do things like this. Um, I did preserve the wood just in case in the future if somebody wants to strip this back. You guys saw me use the shellac over all the wood so it wouldn't absorb any of the paint. It'd be easy to strip off and it would come off easily. If somebody wanted to, say, um, fill and maybe paint in wood grain, which is totally doable, you could absolutely do that if you didn't want to re-veneer the entire thing. But um, I just thought this was a nice kind of fun thing to do. We kept it safe. We didn't damage it further and it can be brought back later if it needs to. Um, but otherwise it was just, I mean, it was going. It had too much damage for most people to fix up. So now he's a handsome guy. I think it's, oh yeah, just so lovely. I got a little smudge there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you have a wonderful week. Thank you so, so, so very much for watching and hanging out with me the way that you guys do. I really appreciate it. Um, you guys are just amazing humans. And I will see you next week.